Only the best and most recent updates introduced to us has to be the Glaive and Exotic Gloves interaction. At one point, we could only use Glaives and Exotic Gloves as separate items, but now they've been combined to interact with each other and allow full onboard crafting with whatever you have in mind. Which means certain exotics like Winter Gill has been revived from the dead and given a second chance at life, and today's build is going to give you just that. I have a build that's going to allow you to make any glaive you have one shot mages to ultras, apply a 575 damage boost to your weapon, have constant healing on supply via devourer, and apply a 15 to 30% debuff to targets depending on what you like the most. This here is honestly kind of scary with how strong glaives can be in endgame and this here will be proof of how absolutely busted they can be when we add them all together. So to start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void so each time you defeat a target with void abilities, you will get Devour. You then want Child of the Old Gods so that each time you place your rifts down and hit a target, you will send out a Void Soul that will drain enemies and grant you grenade and health energy while also weakening targets. With Devour on the hand, this will allow us to safely stay within an engagement as long as we like and without fear of dying over something small or being outright surrounded. I want to devour the most for the build because of the restrictions that Winter Gear brings, which is his timer. At 5 seconds for each stack, you will not have enough time to bounce out of a fight and back in again with all your buffs intact. You will be against time here, so you will need to definitely have devour or some sort of healing ability available to sustain your health. This is why I also added on the Child of your Gods, as we'll be using our rifts here and there, and the chance to get ability NG back is too good to turn down. Chaos Accelerant is also a good choice as well, but this will only benefit you if you tend to use your grenade a lot, which the build can come the switch in and out of if need be. The fragments now should reflect upon the user and how often you tend to play into your exotics on hand. So Devour and our Glaive of Choice will be working over time, I would recommend you focus on fragments that will increase duration and apply buffs on hand. Echo of Exchange for example will allow users to generate grenade energy or melee kills, which surprisingly works with Glaives. Echo Leeching is also the same where mini kills will start health regeneration, and this will help you out a lot when stacked with Devour for longer lasting effects. From here, having Echo of Undermining for a 15% debuff via grenades, and Echo of Exclusion for causing targets to explode is a good setup to continue onwards, but you could add on the Echo of Persistent instead for extended Devour effects. For the mods and stats section, we do have some room to play around with and enhance how we see fit, as honestly the build can work without high level stats or seasonal mods if you wish. Now to start resilience, recovery and discipline will be the go to stats to invest in, however there isn't a specific tier you need to aim for to make the build extensive while out in the field. But for an example, resilience at 50 to 100 will be smart as you can get the higher damage reduction while also making full use of the passive aggressive guard mod which grants the users a 50% damage reduction while using our glaives. I will then make sure that recovery is at 60 to 80 as a secondary form of action once I've gotten the resilience stat sorted since naturally this will recover quite fast for us. Adding on the Reaping Well Maker mod with Bountiful Well will allow us to always produce two elemental wells after making a rift and these here will grant us the required energy to build up our abilities while also helping our teams as well. Discipline can stay at 60 since we have a primary weapon with demolitions available but also because we have Echo of Exchange available that makes the whole process easier. Be sure to add on the Elemental Ordnance mod since you will be using our grains quite a bit. Now there is one mod left out that will help with making the whole strength build a thing, even more stronger, and that is the Higher Energy Fire mod. The Higher Energy Fire is going to give you a 20% weapon buff when collecting all the power or in our case Elemental Worlds via the Elemental Charge mod, and this here will stack with Judgment or Kelgroth damage perks as well. As high energy fire can last until a target is killed, we could in theory use this effect along with the skills effect to dispose of bosses within just a few hits. However, this would require a perfect setup to achieve which is not something we can do. I do also have the Legacy Ambush mod as well for extending our weapon's origin trait, but it doesn't look like it makes a huge impact whatsoever. Now I would advise you to leave this one out unless you notice any changes involved. In leftovers, I would then recommend you add on the Kinetic or Hummock Cypher mods so that you can produce orbs of power easily, and the Scavenger mod, specifically the Light Machine Gun or Shotgun so that we can always find ammo when we need it most for a given heavy or pick. 
Now lastly, the weapons being used, and we are of course using the Judgment of Kalgorf Glaive from this season, which is the first aggressive frame of its kind. The frame on its own has a high impact rating compared to others, but in turn sacrifices its shield duration which indicates to players that the player style of the weapon is to be aggressive as possible. The weapon can roll a perk called Close to Mini, where Glaive Projectile Final Blows improve the Glaive damage by 30% for 10 seconds, which is a must have. As a perk requires final blows to make it function, you have two choices of going about this. You can either get the Demolitious perk on the third slot so that it can auto reload your glaive after a grenade is used, and this here will allow you to avoid needing to reload the weapon there and then. Or you can use the Overflow perk to overflow the weapon and have a larger magazine straight away. I went with Overflow as it's easy to proc with second thought and the amount you can get is enough to sustain you for long and in death fights. These two perks are what I found to make the weapon feel better at what it does, as it's incredibly slow when reloading, and yet it can pack a punch when we get all of our damage boosts going, but this only works when you play aggressive. You will also have the Origin trait named Ambush, which is going to provide you an extra 10% on top of the other boosts we have going. So if we exclude the Ambush perk, we then have Close to Melee, which is 30%, Winter's Gear, which is 275%, our Grenade Debuff, which is 15%, and the high energy fire, which is 20%, all combined. This would give you a grand total of 575% damage boost while using this glaive, which is insane but also worth the risk and commitment. We can also increase the damage by an extra 30% if we apply the Tractor's Cannon Weak Confect instead of the 15% VR grenade, which is also reliable if you tend to use your glaive for even the bosses you face. The only downside is that stacking damage and then using this against bosses doesn't always work out for the best, so caution is required. Now with everything shown, you will get one of the best Warlock Glaive builds out there for wiping up enemies with a little sweat, but it does have a high risk reward requirement that not all players will be accustomed to. I do enjoy the ability to build up damage very quickly while also having a devouring effect as it makes me feel like a demon on the battlefield. However, I wouldn't use this in GMs or even most end games, as the damage being taken from these environments would be too much for the build to sustain. It's amazing for speedrunning content, and the damage is really no joke, but the micromanaging involved may be too much for most to handle, and honestly, I don't see this being really popular unless it's a really niche or specific content you want to run this in. But like always, let me know what you think. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while I'm here. I will leave a dim link for the build and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you all again soon.